Hi, I'm Nancy Malillo. I work at Fresh Yoga in New Haven, Connecticut. And Studio Live TV is great because it gets to bring my classes to the students that can't make it to my class. People get busy and now they can take a class anywhere. We can stream the classes live and we don't have to venture out into the snow. We can fit it around our schedules and we really enjoy the flexibility that the online yoga provides. Catching Nancy and all the other fresh instructors online is easy. Simply fill out our secure form with your name and email and log right in. Choose from a robust library of classes from Nancy and the Fresh team, with up to five new sessions being uploaded daily, keeping it fresh and keeping it real. You can subscribe on a per month basis or pay per class as you go. Stay tuned here for a complimentary Nancy Malillo class on us. After a workout with Nancy, we know you'll be coming back for more. So we've been having a great experience with it and I really love it. So I'll catch you online. Nancy's philosophy stems from the connection between the mind and the body and the role of breathing within this connection. Formerly asthmatic, Nancy teaches that negative thoughts can trap energy and breath, resulting in injury, while positivity, proper breathing, and being present in the moment creates physical, emotional, and spiritual harmony. I'm looking forward to having a yoga workout with you. Fresh Yoga and Studio Live TV are proud to present one of Nancy's full classes right here. This particular class includes amazing core strength training and a focus on pranayama, a type of energizing breathing exercise. All right, let's get comfortable and find a way that you can sit that feels good in your body. If that means bringing your legs straight forward, that's okay. All right, if you have knee issues. And then just close your eyes. And we begin by finding our foundation. Draw the sitting bone straight down. Draw the tailbone down. And feel the ground underneath you. So every pose has a seat, a foundation. So we start with a sense of steadiness. And then right from the tailbone, lengthen the spine. Imagine there's a string at the top of your head, at the crown of the head. And on the inhale, lengthen the crown all the way up towards the ceiling. And then as you exhale, let's draw our ears back so that the skull bones line up with the tailbone. And that'll draw your chin in slightly so it tucks just a little bit. So we open the body and we prepare it for our practice. Open and ready to receive. Inhale, lengthen your shoulders up. And then as you exhale, roll them straight back so that the heart spreads, front of the heart is wide open. And then as you exhale, let's take the tips of the shoulder blades, the very bottom of the shoulder blades, draw them in towards the back body a little bit deeper, and you'll feel the back of the heart open as well. And then take an inhale and through the nose, keep your belly soft and feel the breath as it comes in and spreads into the front, the back, the sides of your lungs. And as you exhale, just draw your navel back slightly so that you squeeze the breath out. You feel the breath as you're completely empty. Keep the belly soft and keep repeating this breath, a deep inhale, feeling the breath as it comes into the body, spreads into the body, and the exhale as you draw the navel in, just allowing one breath to pour into the other.
and then bring your awareness into the shoulders. And on your next inhale, send your breath into your shoulders and just notice them. Notice if you have any tension there, any tight spots. And send a breath right into your tight spot. And then as you exhale, just soften around it. Relax into it. We hold a lot of tension in the shoulders. Hold a lot of stress, a lot of life burdens, and sometimes we just get stuck. When we're stuck in the shoulders, we tend to harden. And sometimes make decisions based, fear based decisions as we're stuck and tight and stressed. Well, we can use the practice to start to move the energy out of there to open us up and liberate what lives there, get it out of there. Right? and start making new pathways in the body. That's what's wonderful about coming to the mat and doing the asana portion, moving and changing the shapes to change what gets stuck there, to get it out. But what I want you to do tonight is I want you to explore using the breath and breathing into the shoulders, really feeling the shoulders and noticing what they're doing in every pose. Notice when they retract, that come, you know, they come together, when they spread so that you're broadening across, when you lift them, when you move them, and treat them like you would a new friend. And I say a new friend because when you meet someone new that you really start to connect with, you want to know everything about that person, right? You notice everything about them. You pay attention to them. Do that for your shoulders tonight. And when you inhale, I want you to inhale love and kindness into your shoulders. Just like you would treat your new friend. And when you lose your attention in the practice, it's all right. That's part of the practice. That's what yogis do. We come back and we do it again and again. Reconnect to the breath. Free from judgment, just come back. And keep your eyes closed and just switch the cross of your legs. Now, bring your elbows in front of you at shoulder height and your palms. Let them touch. And we'll do a little bit of work here in freeing up the shoulders. Take an inhale and open the arms. Let the chest open and the shoulders will actually roll back. And on the exhale, draw the navel in and round forward. You can even bring the chin towards the chest. Broaden the shoulders and then the back. Inhale and exhale. Keep the eyes closed and just work the movement here. And you'll notice throughout the class we'll be doing things where we'll do poses where we're moving some energy and maybe little mini vinyasas loosening up what's there in the shoulders and then we'll go into strengthening and creating the new pathways. But first we have to move whatever's in there out. Right? Now as you're moving, if you feel you're more, you need more breath across the back, stay there for a couple of breaths and breathe. If you feel it's across the front of the shoulders that you're tighter, stay open and take a few breaths there. So let it be organic. Let it be what you need. Good. The next time that you're open, just let the hands rest down, palms up on the legs, and then take an inhale and bring the shoulders all the way up. Hold your breath for a moment, and then take the head of your arm bones, your shoulders straight back. And on an exhale, squeeze your shoulder blades towards each other and drag down your back. 
Good. And then inhale, draw your shoulders up. Hold the breath. Take the head of the arm bones back, and on an exhale, squeeze shoulder blades towards each other. Drag them down. We'll do one more like that. Inhale up. Hold the breath. Take the arms back, and on an exhale, squeeze and drag down. Good. And then release. Good. And then bring your feet, ankles right underneath your knees. We'll do this two ways, reverse tabletop. Now, if it bothers your wrist in any direction, I want you to not do the one direction that bothers you. First one, you'll do with your fingertips away from you. This will take your arm bones and externally rotate them, right? Keep a little bend to the knees. Press down into the hands and the feet and come on up. If this doesn't feel right, turn your hands the other way, okay? I want you to imagine that there's a line drawn down the middle of your mat now and squeeze your ankles, your shins, your thighs towards the midline. Your head can either be up or your neck long here. Deep breath. Hug the hands and the feet energetically towards each other. Breathe into your shoulders. Good. And on an exhale, bring your hips down. And let's switch our hands so now the palms are down, but the fingertips are facing your buttocks. And again, you do the version that feels right in your body. If one doesn't feel right, don't do it. Press down in the feet and the hands. Now roll your collarbones wide. And this one, your arms are more internally rotated. Come on up. You'll feel the difference here. Breathe. Squeeze toward your midline and draw your sitting bones a little towards the heels. Breathe into the shoulders. Now, if you feel a little frisky, on an exhale, bring your hips between your hands for Tibetan swings. Take it into an, a, more of an abdominal, more core work. Exhale. You can even drop the hips down and then lift them up. If it's too much, stay up or come down into Navasana. Bend the knees and do a little bit of core work there. Good. Soften the face. So each pose that you do is a little bit of ease in the pose, too. It's not all effort. Good. Bring the sitting bones down. Keep the knees bent and roll down onto your back now and bring the soles of your feet together for Baddha Konasana. Just close your eyes. Let your palms rest open and bring all your awareness to the inner body, the energy of your inner body, and just notice it. Be in it. Notice your shoulder blades are now just relaxed on the ground and breathe into the shoulders here where they're not doing any work at all. And then take your hands and bring them about two inches below the navel. We'll do some pranayama here. Kapalabhati breath. Sharp, short exhales if you've never done it. On the exhale, the belly pulls away from the hands, and your inhale will be passive. Good. Relax this breath. Just close your eyes. Feel it from the inside. Take a deeper breath and clasp your hands behind your head. Take an inhale and on the exhale, curl up. Let your knees and your elbows come towards each other. Baddha Konasana crunch and then inhale down. And then exhale up and inhale. Make sure you let me know if anything's uncomfortable in your body. And we can change any pose. Good. 
Good. And then next time that you bring the legs down, stay down. Just bring your palms open by your sides. And feel. Turn your awareness inward. And take your hands to the outside of your thighs. And bring your knees together. Bring the legs straight up. Reach through the balls of the feet and flex your toes back. Clasp your hands behind your head. And on an inhale, lift your head in off the uh, floor. See if you can keep your shoulder blades off the floor. Inhale here, and on the exhale, bend your left knee. Let the right elbow reach towards the knee. Reach the right foot up towards ceiling. Pull your navel towards the spine. Inhale, straighten that left leg. And then exhale, bend the right. So all you're doing is bending one knee and then the other. The leg that's reaching up towards the ceiling, reach through the ball of the foot like you're trying to touch the tiles and pull the navel in. It's a little bit of an isometric move here. That's really good for strengthening the low back, especially if you've sat a lot today. It's a good way to start to strengthen our back muscles. Now the next time that the left elbow goes towards that right knee, just bring your feet to the floor. Relax your palms open again. Close your eyes and just feel here. And we'll take it into a bridge pose. But it's a, this bridge pose, listen to the cueing. It's a little different than probably what you normally do. Just keep your feet, ankles underneath. Touch your heels a little bit with your fingers. And then bring your elbows as close to your sides as you can get them. And then let your hands spread wide like a fan, palms facing each other. You look like you have robot arms here, right? Keep the body down now on the ground for now. And then inhale and lengthen the shoulders up just a little bit, a couple of inches towards the ears, not too high. And press down now into your shoulders, into your arms, into the elbows, into the back of the head. Take an inhale, and on the exhale, curl the pubic bone up. Keep pressing down now in the arms, upper arms, the elbows, shoulders, and the back of the head. And you'll feel your shoulders retracting a little towards each other in the back. All right. Breathe here right into the back of your shoulders. And then take a few breaths into the front of the shoulders, maybe even across the collarbones. Good. And then slowly roll down. Take your time coming down so you come down in stages from the upper back, the middle back, and then the lower back. Once you're down, let your hands rest by your sides. Take your feet as wide as the mat. Let your knees touch, or if they can't, you know, almost touch. And roll them from one leg to one side to the other like windshield wipers. And that'll twist a little bit and open up the sacrum. Good. Good. And then bring the knees straight up. Bring the knees in towards your chest. And hold on to the shins or the back of your thighs. And start to roll forward and back on the spine, up and down. Inhale. Good. Next time you come up, come on to all fours with your hands right underneath your shoulders. <clears throat> Let your belly be soft. Curl your toes. And on the inhale, come into cow pose. Notice when your head comes up and the tailbone comes up, shoulders come together. And then exhale into cat. Pull the navel in and let your shoulders round in the back, broaden. And then relax the belly and start moving through cow and cat. 
Pay attention to what your back's doing, what your shoulders are doing. Breathe into it. Good. Now the next time after you do cow, right, with the tailbone and the head curled up, bring the spine to neutral and reach your left hand out to the side, palm facing the floor, just gazing at the floor, inhale, and on the exhale, thread the needle under your arm, so you come onto the left cheek, you press into the right hand here, breathe into this left shoulder, and if you can reach the right arm up, reach it up and take a bind, grabbing onto the opposite hip, so you'll notice one shoulder is rolling in, one shoulder is rolling back. Breathe into the shoulder that you feel needs the breath the most. Stay steady with your breath. Now, if you're feeling you can up-level this a little bit, switch to a little bit of a core breath, which means on the exhale, squeeze in a little on the pelvic floor, Mula Bandha, squeeze in a little Uddiyana Bandha behind the navel, and lift your right leg straight up and back of you. Square the hip, just reach the leg up. You might wobble out, that's okay. <laughs> it kind of makes you laugh when you wobble out. Good. Three, doesn't it? It's something about you feel like you're a kid when you fall out. It's playful. All right, come out of it. Bring one hand down, slide that arm out. I don't know what it is, but it's like you're a weeble or something, and it kind of makes you laugh. Bring the right arm out to the side, <laughs> palm down, and thread the needle. You've got to be able to laugh, right? Let the cheek rest to the side. Now you can either press down on that left hand or reach the arm up and wrap it around the, so you grab that opposite hip. Breathe here. So first, for now, no core breath. Just breathe into the shoulders. And then if you feel you can up-level it, start to use a little bit of core in your breath, squeezing in on the exhale, and lift that left leg up. As you're lifting it up, squeeze towards midline, the shins and the thighs, and that'll help you stabilize in the pose. Nice. Or good, everyone. Good. Bring the hand down, slide the arm out. <laughs> Now, if you need a child's pose, go ahead and take it. If you feel you're ready for downward dog, your shoulders are warm enough, just press it back to downward dog. Press into your hands, into every finger, and I want you to imagine there's a jar underneath each, the palm of each hand, and energetically you're opening the jars in the opposite directions towards the outer edge of the mat without moving the hands. Right, just feeling the thumb and the index finger fire up. Take another inhale, and as you exhale, roll your shoulders wide. Let the outer armpits roll towards each other so the back spreads wide open. Take a deep inhale into your shoulders, and then exhale out through your mouth and soften. Good. Inhale into the shoulders, and exhale. Sarah, let's get your hands straight. Inhale again, right there. And exhale. Beautiful. Ground down in the right foot. Reach the left leg straight back, hip height. Take an inhale, and on the exhale, core plank. Bring your knee towards your nose. Round through the back. Inhale the leg back. Exhale, round like a cat in the back. Good. Inhale. Exhale. This time, inhale back. And on the exhale, step the foot forward for lunge. Keep the fingers on the floor right under your shoulders and make sure your left ankle's under the knee and that your feet line up with your hip bones. And we'll build our seat here, right, our foundation. Close your eyes. Take an inhale. And on the exhale, press your feet right down into the ground. Inhale again. And on the exhale, lift the thigh bone straight up. Feel the energy in the body shift. Inhale. And on your exhale, squeeze toward your midline. Good. Inhale again. 
And on the exhale, hug the feet towards each other, like you're trying to scissor the legs. Breathe in this power. Feel it. Exhale, downward dog. Now, if you'd like a flow here, what I want you to do every time you come down into Chaturanga is hug your elbows by your ribs so that your shoulders roll back. Feel it. That's it. Nice. Good, Lena. Deep breath. And then press it back to downward dog. Good. Now, as we work through the, get more heated, we'll ground down first in the left foot, reach the right leg back. I'll talk in a moment. Take an inhale, and on the exhale, core plank. Good. Good breath here. Inhale back. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Good. Inhale back. And on the exhale, step it forward. Lunge. Good. We'll build this side too. Close your eyes. Feel it from the inside. Take a deep inhale. And on the exhale, ground down into your feet. Feel the ground. Inhale. On the exhale, lift your thigh bones straight up. Good. Inhale. And on the exhale, squeeze toward your midline. One more. Inhale. Really good breath tonight. Exhale. Squeeze your feet towards each other. I feel the room breathing. It's awesome. Feel the power here. Exhale. Downward dog. Now here's what I was going to say. You can take a flow. You can also stay in downward dog. All right? I want you to build the practice to be what you need it to be. Especially we're paying attention to the shoulders, right? You don't have to take every single vinyasa. Now the next few poses, the next sequence will start to move a little more quickly and we won't be holding the poses that long. What I want you to do is focus on flowing with the breath. Let this be a moving meditation on the breath. Ground down in the right foot. Reach the left leg straight back. Inhale. And on the exhale, step the foot forward for lunge. Press down into the feet. And then wait for an exhale, round up, let the arms float up so you don't have to use the shoulders. Good. Beautiful. Nice. Clasp the hands behind. And on the inhale, roll your chest open. And on your exhale, ostrich, belly to thigh or inner leg. Good. Ground down in the back foot and reach the arms up, warrior one. Bring the hands to the heart. Turn the feet to the windows. Parallel the feet and then turn them out sideways for, um, sideways, turn them out slightly for horse stance. Bring the hands onto the thighs and squat down. Take an inhale, lengthen, and on the exhale, let the left shoulder come down. Keep that arm straight. Press into the left leg. Bend the right elbow. Inhale up. And on the exhale, press into the right leg. Arm straight. Bend the opposite elbow. And keep going. A little mini vinyasa, building heat here and twisting and using your hand for a little bit of resistance as you straighten that arm and press into that thigh, opening the hip a little bit more. Next time the right shoulder comes down, come on up, bring the hands to the heart, heart center. Turn your feet to the back of the room for lunge. Curl the back toes. Reach the arms up. Inhale. I'll watch. I'll make sure we're all on the same page. Take your time. Clasp your hands behind. Inhale. Open your chest. And on the exhale, belly to thigh or the inner leg. Ostrich. Breathe here. Notice the shoulders are pulling towards each other in this pose. Hands on the sacrum. Bring the arms up. Warrior one. Warrior one's our resting pose in between here. Bring your hands to the heart. Turn your feet to the front of the room. Step it back. Downward dog. Take a flow if you'd like.
Good. Ground down in the left foot. Reach the right leg back. Take an inhale. And on the exhale, step the foot forward for lunge. Take your time coming up. Use your core as you come up. Squeeze in on the exhale. Arms float up. Nice. So you work from the inside out. Clasp your hands behind. And on the inhale, open your chest. And as you exhale, belly to thigh or inner leg. Ostrich. Feel the shoulder blades as they move towards each other. Bring the hands on the sacrum. Ground the back foot, warrior one. Exhale, hands to heart. Turn the feet to the side wall. Take a horse stance. Turn the feet out slightly. Bend the knees, hands on the thighs. Inhale, lengthen. Right shoulder comes down. Arm is straight. Left elbow bends. Inhale up. Opposite. Go on your own. The next time the left shoulder comes down, come on up. Bring the hands to the heart. All right, straighten the legs a little. Turn the left foot to the back of the room. Come into lunge, arms up. Take your time. Breathe. We'll move together. Good. Clasp your hands behind. Inhale, open the chest, and on an exhale, dive forward. Lift your thigh bones up as you come down. Right? Everything we did from that first lunge applies for every time we're in a standing pose and how to engage the legs. Good. Bring the hands on the sacrum. Ground the back foot. Warrior one. Nice. Exhale, hands to heart. Turn your feet to the front of the room. Step it back, downward dog. Go ahead and take a flow if you'd like. Good. Ground down in the right foot. Reach the left leg straight back. Take an inhale. And on the exhale, step it forward for lunge. Take your time coming up. Use your core. Good. Nice. Inhale here. Exhale, fist of fire by your side. Bend the back knee. Inhale. Exhale. Squeezing it at the navel. Inhale. Exhale. Good. This time, inhale. Exhale. <clears throat> now, inhale up. Exhale, hands to heart. Inhale, lengthen. Twist. Bring that right arm over the left leg. Twisting lunge. Good. Ground the back foot, warrior one. Nice. Exhale, hands to heart. Turn your feet to the back of the room. Lunge. Right foot forward. Inhale, open up. Exhale, fist of fire. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. One more like that. Inhale. Exhale. This time, inhale up. Exhale, hands to the heart. Come into your twist. Lengthen the spine so that you lengthen the ribs away from the pelvis and then twist. Good. Still not holding too long. Deep breath here. Ground the back foot, warrior one. Good. Hands to the heart. Turn the feet to the front of the room. Downward dog. Step it back. If you'd like a flow, go ahead and take a flow. Good. Ground down in the left foot. Reach your right leg back. Take an inhale. And on the exhale, step it forward for lunge. Take your time coming up. Good. Good. Inhale. Exhale, fist of fire. Bend the back knee a little. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Good. We're twist again. Inhale up. Exhale. Hands to heart. Lengthen and twist. Good. 
Good. Ground the back foot, warrior one. Bring the hands to the heart. Turn the feet to the back of the room. Lunge. Inhale. Exhale, fist of fire. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Good. This time you'll inhale up. On an exhale, bring the hands to the heart and twist. Lengthen first. Get long. Good. Ground the back foot, warrior one. Exhale, hands to heart. Turn the feet to the front of the room. Step it back. Downward dog. Find ease in the practice. Don't make everything so hard. Right? Can you breathe in the pose? Do you feel like you're pushing it so far to the edge that you're starting to not even feel anything? Take it back a little bit. Pull back a little bit. And then move again. Good. Ground down in the right foot. Reach the left leg back. Take an inhale. And on the exhale, step the foot forward for lunge. Round up. And some of you did this with me last week. Some haven't. So I'm going to show it again. Warrior three squats. You can keep your arms in any position you like. I like my hands on my hips because it gives me the ability to square the hips. You'll come up on the standing leg. Square the hips as best you can. Bend that back knee so the heel comes towards the buttocks. And then we'll squat. Inhale and exhale. Inhale and exhale. All right? So come on up. Bring that heel towards your buttocks. Good. And on the exhale, you lift up. This is great for building strength in the calf, the ankle, the quadricep, and your back, and good core strength. Inhale this time, and on the exhale, step the foot back, lunge, arms up. Close your eyes if you feel steady, and just feel the energy now in the body. I right, notice that your heart rate may be up a little bit. Let it settle in. Good. And this time, bring the hands to the heart. Come into a twist, and we'll hold it now. All right? And if you can up-level it, go ahead and take either the extended twist or the bind. So that would be right hand to the outside of the left foot, even if it's on a block, or take a bind. Good. Good. Bring the hands back to Namaste now, so you're back in your twist. Take an inhale, and on the exhale, step your right foot forward for twisting chair, twisting ukatasana. Now you can stay in your twisting chair, or you can take an extended twist, bring the right hand to the ground, the left arm up, or side crow. Side crow, you would squat down. If you need to see it, I'll show it. And you twist. The hands are shoulder distance apart. You press the hands into the ground, and you energetically open the jars. Just like you would when you do downward dot. You can open the legs too if you feel steady. Nice. <laughs> Good. Beautiful. Release it to a forward bend. Let it go. Take an inhale, lengthen halfway. Exhale, let it go. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale. This time, inhale, lengthen, and on the exhale, step or jump back to plank pose. Now you can, we'll do a side plank here, but I want you to humor me. I want to show you how to externally rotate your arm bone. So if you can go to your left arm, go to the left hand, come to the outer edge of the left foot, and inner edge of the left foot, sorry, and put your right foot about mid-mat. Lift your thigh bones up, and then take your right hand, bring it into your left armpit, and literally externally rotate your arm bone until your shoulder blade squeezes into the back body. Then lift the arm up, and that's how it should be. Right? That's what you want your shoulder to do. Now, if you can stack the feet, go ahead, or 
you know, take a up level the pose, feel free to do whatever feels right for you. You can even take a wild thing, step the back foot, the top foot back, curl the pubic bone to the ceiling and reach that arm forward. Nice. Watch out for props. Exhale, downward dot. So when you do side plank, reason for side plank is really is lubricating the shoulder, right? And regular plank, you're not doing that. You're not externally rotating like that. <clears throat> Ground down in the left foot. Reach the right leg straight back. Take an inhale. And on the exhale, step the foot forward for lunge. Come on up. Good. You know where we're going next, right? So get your arm position, and we'll do warrior three squats. So come up on the standing leg, bend the knee, bring that left heel in towards your buttocks, inhale, bend the knee, standing leg, exhale, lift. Keep the back long. Good. Nice. Good. Good. On the next exhale, step the foot back to lunge. Close your eyes. Feel it. Feel the energy in the body. <laughs> I'm not trying to kill you, honestly. Let's take it into a twist. Bring the hands to the heart. Now take your time. We'll hold this pose. That Warrior 3 squats will help you a lot with Half Moon. It'll help you a lot when we do Warrior 3. It's really good for building strength in the leg. <clears throat> now, bring the hands back to Namaste. And on an exhale, step the back foot up to meet the front so you're in your twisting chair. You can stay here or go ahead and take a side crow. Be where you need to be. Breathe into it. Bend the elbows more staff like a shelf. Good. <laughs> good. Release it to a good old-fashioned forward bend. Hold it. In fact, take the forward bend that feels really good in your body. Right? Let it be one of your favorite forward bends. No matter which one you're doing, I want you to press the feet down and squeeze towards your midline so you build your seat first and let your upper body surrender and find a way to breathe into your shoulders. Good. Release it, and on your exhale, round up. Let the hands come to the heart. All right. So you probably knew this was coming. Ground down in the right foot, warrior three. See how steady you can be after firming up the legs, right, and getting a lot of awareness there. Take any arm position that feels right for your body. Nice, Sarah. Good. Beautiful. Now, bend the front knee, step the back foot all the way back for lunge, and bring your hands to the inside of that front foot for a runner's lunge. Press that right arm and leg into each other. Lift your thigh bones up. Breathe here. And if you can deepen it, you can bring your forearms down to the ground. Good. Now bring the back knee down and come on up to your hands and look up here for a moment. Take the right foot and come to the pinky toe side of the foot. So just let that hip open like that. <clears throat> and then press the foot into the ground 
and draw the foot in energetically toward your pelvis. By that I mean really plug it in. If you don't feel that bone plugging in, take your hand on your thigh. Press your thigh bone in a little. Now you can stay here. You can even press the thigh and hand into each other a little bit or bring the hands down and lift your thigh bones up. If you're doing this, keep the thigh bones lifting up. Press into your feet. Draw them energetically in toward your pelvis so your bones plug in. And breathe here. The object is not to get that right leg on the ground. It's just a different area of the hip to get into. This is actually a good stretch for sciatica. Bring the back knee down now. You can keep that hip open and lean forward on the left hand. Bend the knee and grab that foot. Press the hand and foot into each other. Lengthen and then twist a little bit. So you're opening the chest in a twist, the thigh and the hip. Nice. Good. Beautiful. Release it to downward dog. So now on this side, we'll do side plank on the right side. You don't have to do your foot this time. I really want you to do that just to show you how to externally rotate the arm bone. That really helped, and it's the only way you can do it. Set it up, right? Take the time to get yourself in the right form. Good. So side plank, right side. Take your time. I want you to feel that shoulder blade. That's it. Nice, Laura. Lift the thigh bones up. <laughs> if you want to take wild things, step the top leg behind you. Curl the pubic bone up and reach that opposite arm over your ear. Breathe. Good. Exhale, downward dog. Either step or jump forward to forward bend. Inhale, lengthen halfway. Exhale, let it go. Inhale. Exhale. This time, inhale. And on your exhale, round up. And bring the hands to your heart. Good. And we'll ground down in that left foot and come into your warrior three. Squeeze your shins, ankles, and thighs towards midline so you feel a strong connection to your inner leg. Any arm position that feels right. Good. 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 Bend the knee. Step it back to lunge. Both hands to the inside of the front foot. Runner's lunge. So you want your left ankle to be under the knee here, right? And then if you can deepen it, go ahead and bring the forearms either to the block or to the floor. Good. Bring the back knee down. Come up to your hands. And let's let that left hip open to the side. So you press into the pinky toe side of the left foot. Press the foot into the ground and then draw it inward towards the pelvis so the bone plugs in. Now you can either keep a hand on that thigh, lean away so you're using a little resistance, or put both hands on the ground and lift your thigh bones up. Deeper would be bringing your forearms down. Good. Good. Bring the back knee down. You can keep that hip open. Come forward on the right hand. Bend the right knee and grab that foot with the left hand. Once you have that, press the hand and foot into each other as you lengthen and twist towards the left. You don't have to look up either. You can keep the neck long or look at the floor. So a lot of times what happens is we use our neck for everything and that will affect the shoulders as well. Good. 
release it and step it back to downward dog. If you'd like a flow, go ahead and take a flow. Good. And then come down onto your knees and roll back and sit on your heels. Look up here. So we'll work dolphin pose in two ways. So the first time I want to use a block and show you exactly what your shoulders are supposed to do. The second time we'll take it on an adventure and do something crazy and fun. Uh, this is fun too, but you'll take the block and you want to put it so that your pinkies are at the tip of the block like that. And what I'm doing here is if you put your hands, bend your elbows at your sides, put your hands like this, inhale, and then as you exhale I want you to roll your arms back. Yeah, so I want you to feel the literal, your arm bones are literally shoulders rolling back. So that's what we're going to do with the block. So put your hands on the floor. If you don't feel that with the palms up, put them down again. And then roll them back. And just use the block as a guide. You're not really squeezing it. It's just a guide here. Don't worry about it if your thumbs aren't on the ground all the way. It's okay. Now keep your head neutral and press down into the hands and to the forearms. Take an inhale and lift up right in between your shoulder blades. Get a little bit of a cat back there. And then as you exhale, lift your hips up for dolphin. Keep pressing the hands and the forearms down and gaze at a point between the feet so that the head falls in line with the spine. Breathe into your shoulders. These look awesome. Good. Now come down to your knees and round up. Did you feel like you could have stayed there even longer? Isn't that unusual? Like when you do dolphin, don't you usually feel shaky? That's because the arm bones have to be like that. So what we'll do in dolphin, and we'll do it with variation, so I'll show you some fun things you can do. You come down to your elbows and you'll grab onto the biceps so you can measure the distance. We'll do the same thing, setting it up so that you roll your arms back. And you can either put the hands down or clasp them. Same thing, lift up in between the shoulder blades, get a little bit of a cat back, and you'll come up. Once you're up, you can do a couple of things. You can either stay in dolphin or lift one leg up, or if you're feeling like, hey, I want to do a crazy shoulder opener, open your feet, bring your feet about as wide as the mat. You'll press down into one hand, you'll bring the opposite hand behind, and then press your tailbone away. Right? See, I don't talk when I do that one because it's, it's just like when you're doing the one where you wobbled and you fell out of. If you're not using your core on the exhale and squeezing in, then you don't want to go down when you're up there like that. So I can talk you through all that. Okay? If you really are shoulder tweaky, you need the block, feel free to still use it. Otherwise, toss it aside and let's get some dolphins on here. <clears throat> Grab your biceps first so you measure the distance. And then either clasp your hands or, oh, I'm sorry, roll the palms open first. Let's get the arm bones rolled back. And then press the hands down flat, palms down, or clasp your hands. Start to press firmly into the ground and then make a cat back. Lift in between your shoulder blades. Now come up into dolphin. Press your thighs back. Let your head be relaxed. Breathe here. If you feel it's not right, come down, set it up again. You'll know because you felt it in the other pose. If you want to lift a leg up, lift the left leg up. If you want to lift an arm behind your back, put the right arm behind you. Press into the back and draw the tailbone long. Breathe here, and if you feel frisky, lift the left leg up. Steady with the breath. Good. If one arm's behind the back, switch. Press down firmly in the hand that you put on the ground. That's it. Nice. 
Good. If you're lifting legs, switch legs. Beautiful. Take it back now into a child's pose. Good. Now take your hands and bring them by your feet so that you feel the broadening of the shoulders and breathe into your back and into the shoulders here. A lot of our stresses that we put on ourselves really are just the way that we look at things. All right? And the more stressed we are, the more we take on, and the harder we are on ourselves about it. So we're working on changing that, being able to breathe and move whatever's in there in the shoulders to get it out. We don't need it. Good. And then come on up and come into downward dog. Just press it back. Walk your legs out a little bit. And let's ground down into the right foot. Reach the left leg straight back. Take an inhale. And on the exhale, step it forward for lunge. Ground the back foot so the arch of the back foot faces the heel of the front foot. And then come up to warrior one, two. Yeah. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> Good. So let's take our palms now. First, make sure that your ankle's under your knee. Press down into the feet. Lift the thigh bones up so we build it from the ground up. And now let your palms flip up towards the ceiling. Feel how your shoulder blades spread across the back, and they kind of roll down a little bit the back. Keep them like that and let the right hand rest on the leg and the left arm reach up and breathe into the left side of the ribs and the waist. Good. And then let that forearm come down onto your thigh. Press down into the forearm and take the opposite arm, either bring it behind you and for half a bind, or slide that left arm under the leg and clasp hands and roll the chest open for an interlock. So you'll get more chest and shoulder opening. Breathe here. Now, if you can take bound triangle, trikonasana, straighten the front leg and keep your bind. If it's too much, release the bind. Straighten the front leg and reach the top arm up. Deep breath. Good. If you're in the bind, take your right hand, bring it on the hip, and then everyone put your right hand on the hip. Bend the left knee and let's take a half moon pose. All right? Ardha Chandrasana. Firm up that standing leg just like you did in your Warrior Three squats. Nice. Use a block if you need it. Breathe here. If you can bend that top knee, bend the knee, grab the foot, take a half a bow. Exhale, downward dog. This time from downward dog, take a couple of deep breaths here, and then come into plank pose and come onto your belly. And then clasp your hands behind your back. And take your feet as wide as the mat. Close your eyes. I want you to feel what your shoulders do when we do this pose. Locusts in a mini vinyasa. Curl the pubic bone towards the floor, and on the inhale, lift your chest and your feet up. Feel your shoulder blades retract and come together. Inhale down. Exhale up. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Good. Release it. Good. Press it back to downward dog. Good. 
ground down in the left foot, reach the right leg back, take an inhale, and on the exhale, step that foot forward for lunge, and then set up your warrior two feet, use your core as you come up, so ground the back foot, so the arch of the back foot faces the heel of the front, good. Flip your palms up, let the shoulders close your eyes, feel them spread wide open, and then bring that left hand onto the leg, right arm up. If you're tight at all in the left sacrum or SI joint here, take your forearm onto the hip crease and press down. Breathe into where you're wide open. Good. Let's just go like that. Nice. Good. And then bring that form onto your thigh. And if you can take a half a bind, take that. If you can take the full interlock, go ahead and slide the right arm under the leg and clasp hands. Again, if you feel you've taken it too far back, off a little bit, take a breath. All right. Either triangle or bound triangle, straighten the front leg, reach the top arm up, Good. if you're in the bind, take, let go of the bind and bring the top arm on your hip, everyone bring the left arm onto their hip, bend the front knee if you need a block, get it ready for half moon, about a foot away from the right pinky toe. Engage that standing leg. Nice. Beautiful. Bend the top knee if you'd like and open up for half bow. <laughs> nice. Good. Step it back, downward dog. Good. So this will be our last vinyasa for this class. If you'd like to take bow, Dhanurasana, come onto your belly and we can set bow up. Otherwise, you can take a vinyasa or come into child's pose. Bow pose, you would bend the knees and grab your feet. Tops of the feet are the ankles. Bring the knees together. Take an inhale and press the hands and feet into each other as you lift up. Close your eyes, feel your shoulders here. Notice arms are rolling back, shoulder blades retracting, coming together. Breathe into both the front, a few breaths into the front of the shoulders, a couple of breaths into the back. Good. And then release it. Let it go. Good. Good. Let go so your feet can relax, legs can relax. Good. And we'll take a downward dog and just twist it out, which will feel good on the back. So come into downward dog, bring your big toes together, and then inhale, and on the exhale, bend your knees and let your hips drop in one direction. And then inhale up, and on the exhale, let them drop in the opposite direction. Good. And then lift the hips up and come into a child's pose. Just close your eyes. And bring your awareness back into the shoulders. And let one breath just pour into the other. And on an inhale, round up and look here, up here, and I'll show you a couple of three options. Two for strengthening shoulders, one for releasing tension. You know, if your shoulders are like, no way, I have the pose for you. It's from bridge pose, ankles under the knees, you lift the hips up, you put a block on your sacrum. 
The mic is killing me. Let your palms rest open and you bring up one leg at a time. The thing is to make sure that you feel secure on the level of the block. If you're wiggling all over, change the level. Otherwise, it defeats the whole purpose. It's an inversion, but you're also restoring in there. Other options are dolphin at the wall. So we already set up dolphin a couple of times, right? We'll roll arms open and roll them back. Either clasp hands or bring the hands flat down. You'll lift up in between the shoulder blades and come up into dolphin. Walk the heels towards the ground. And on an exhale, one foot, and then the opposite. Now, if you'd like to lift up one leg at a time, you may. Another option is forearm balance, OK? Forearm balance is the same exact setup, except we're facing the wall when we do it. So you'll bring yourself about a shin distance away from the wall. You'll put your hands down there. Same exact setup. Lifting up between the shoulders, coming up. This time you walk your feet. Bring up one leg and then the opposite. And then you squeeze toward your midline like there's no tomorrow. <laughs> Right? Tailbones reaching up towards the ceiling. I think we probably have more dolphins at the wall than forearm, right? Do we? Okay. So I'll talk you through dolphin at the wall. If you're doing forearm balance and you need me, I can help you after we do the dolphins. If you're doing the other pose, stay where you are. You can do it right in the middle of the room. It's fine. Just make sure you're not near a window. So for dolphin at the wall, bring your heels up against the wall. Come on to all fours. Your elbows right under your shoulders. Good. Now flip the palms up so that you roll the arm bones. Yep. And then put the hands down on the ground. Bring your elbows a little closer together, Sarah. So actually grab your biceps. Yeah. Now bring them down. And then press into the arms and the hands and lift up like a cat back right between the shoulder blades and come up into dolphin. Once you're there, walk your heels towards the floor. Keep pressing into the ground with the arms and the hands. And then bring one foot up on the exhale and the opposite. Nice, Lena. Good. Yeah, Laura, bring your feet closer to the wall, even closer. Yeah. And then come down with your elbows right under your shoulders. There. Grab onto your biceps. And then set it up. Roll the arms back. Yeah. Now press down and come up into dolphin. Good. And walk your heels down. You feel too close, yeah. There you go. Walk the heels down first. That'll set you up. Yeah, now bring one foot up and then the opposite. What's that? I'm not going to do it today. Okay, all right. That's all good. <clears throat> good. After your inversion, nice. If you're on the block, you can just bring your feet to the ground, come into bridge, take the block away. If you did forearm balance, headstand, or dolphin at the wall, do a child pose. And then once you come down from the block, take your time coming down so the spine really has a chance to unwind.
and I'll show you something for Shavasana that will continue to open your shoulders but in a very passive way. You can take a blanket and roll it like this. And then you put your entire spine and the back of your head on the blanket. Do you mind if I use your mat just for a moment? <laughs> and let your palms rest open. Notice my arms are down and low by my side. So this will lengthen the traps here and it will open the shoulders. Here, take this blanket. It's already set. There we go. This way. Yeah. Yep. I, mean, I don't like all the fringe in your back like that. There we go. That's it. Good. And then close your eyes. And bring your awareness to the inner body, to your shoulders. Lift your head up. See how this feels? Better? <laughs> and inhale into your shoulders. Breathe in, just letting one breath pour into the next. And with every breath, Breathe in a little bit of love and kindness. Treating your shoulders just like you would if you met a new friend. Make them feel special. Let me know. Better? No.
begin to take a deeper breath. <clears throat> And on an inhale, bend your knees. 